It's so good to be here with you, so grateful, so appreciative. So happy to be sharing this precious, beautiful moment with you. As you enter, please share where you're from, where you're joining us from. Today, it's Saturday afternoon. I'm in Pennsylvania today, the state of Pennsylvania, the state of my birth and my upbringing. It's really good to be here. It's really good to, to be present together. And when we're present together, this is where the magic and miracles arise or is life itself magical and miraculous and in our deeper state of presence we now have the eyes to notice and participate the answer is both both are true welcome danielle thank you for being here So there was an inquiry that came in about having better thoughts, thinking better thoughts. How do I think better thoughts? How do I make my mind think better thoughts? And it's an interesting inquiry because what happens is we create the idea of positive thoughts and we create the idea of negative thoughts. We create the idea of good thoughts and we create the idea of bad thoughts. And when we create the idea of positive thoughts and we create the idea of negative thoughts, we want to enhance the positive thoughts and we want to get rid of the negative thoughts. When we have the idea of good thoughts and bad thoughts, we want to enhance the good thoughts, get rid of the bad thoughts. This is what we call duality, creating a world of duality, of separation, good and bad, right and wrong, positive and negative. And what we discover as we go deeper into the way consciousness works and the way the mind works and the way thought works is that as they say in the Law of Attraction teachings, which is true, what we resist persists and grows stronger. So what we resist, we make stronger. So when we label something as negative, we label something as bad, we label something as wrong, and we try to get rid of it, we try to push it away. Welcome, Zenat. Thank you for being here. This is episode number 87, by the way. 87, that means there was 86 episodes before this for you to check out. If you haven't seen all 86. So even when I'm not live, there's lots of history archived to delve into. And amazing insights we've discovered along the way. So what you're resisting and pushing against you actually, we actually intensify and make stronger. A good way of thinking about this is when you lift weights, right? Doing the bench press, doing the curls, right? So there's resistance. The stronger the resistance, the more the muscle grows, right? But if the muscle has nothing to push against, it will atrophy in time. And it's the same way, the way the mind, whether you're giving something resistance or reinforcement, your attention to it is what allows it to grow. It doesn't matter if you 
are for it or against it. What's important is your attention. So what we think of as negative thoughts are being intensified by our resistance, right? Where if we are able to be aware without resistance, but in a state of pure awareness, kind of like a giant bathtub and the bubble, soap bubble pops up and the soap bubble is like a thought. It pops up and then whew, eventually it pops, right? And this giant bathtub of water is like this infinite field of vast awareness, which is the essence of who and what we are, from which all of our thoughts, emotions, physical sensations, sensory perceptions arise and fall back into. Well, we are the field. When we awaken to the essence of who we are, we are the field of pure infinite awareness of which everything arises and falls back into the pure infinite stillness, the pure profound liberated freedom, the pure space of unconditional love, the deepest depths of empowerment. So what becomes interesting is not positive or negative, not good or bad, not right or wrong, but embracing with pure, unconditioned awareness that which is arising without resistance. And when we can embrace what's arising without resistance, we make the space to rest in the infinite essence of who and what we are. When we're wrestling thoughts, when we're trying to control thoughts, when we're trying to fight thoughts, when we're trying to amplify this thought, get rid of that thought, bring this thought in, push this thought away, we are in a state of We're like the ocean at the top of the ocean where there's that turbulence, you know, and we're in a state of turbulence, when we're in a state of turbulence, welcome Martin, we're not able to rest into the depths and the silence and stillness of who and what we are. And this happens when we forget who and what we are, when we get lost in the illusionary sense of a separate self, the illusionary sense of a separate self, also known as the ego. And when we get lost in the ego, the ego wants to control. At the core fundamental level, what does the ego want to control? You could say the ego wants to control other people, wants to control situations, wants to control its status, wants to control the amount of tension it gets. But at the core root level, What the ego really wants to control at the core root, most subtle level is thought. The ego wants to control thought because all these things are really just manifestations of consciousness, right? So the ego wants to control thought and when it can control thought, that's what it identifies as itself. Who am I? This is who I think I am. I think I'm this. And this is myself, and I want to control to maintain the sense of who I think I am at any and all costs. When we wake into this deeper sense of who and what we are, we recognize really something that transcends thought, that's deeper than thought. That is not the story that we attach and identify ourselves to, right? So when we can rest in the depths of who and what we are, there's this vastness, there's this infinitude, there's this wide open expanse, there's this incredible spaciousness, there's this pure depth of silence, there's the zero point, sort of the reset space where nothing's ever happened, where we're completely and utterly free, where we can completely and utterly rest in the pure essence of who we are. Hey Beth. 
Beth is in, uh, are you in Phoenix, Beth? I heard it was, um, 118 degrees there yesterday. That's, uh, that's warm. Yeah. <laughs> Fun. So we rest in this essence of who and what we are, and there's clarity, there's a space of clarity, a clearing. The way I like to think of it sometimes is like a heartbeat. So it's like thought, no thought, thought, no thought, thought, no thought. So what we start to become aware of is the space, the timeless essence between thought. In this timeless essence, this ever present I am between thought, between the sense of linear thought of cause and effect there's this clarity and in this clarity something new can arise when the mind is quiet when the mind becomes quiet something new can arise new ideas new imaginings, new visions, new perspectives. There's a creativity that's available to emerge through us as a clear channel for the universal creative intelligence to flow through us in this moment right now. Welcome, Nikki. Hi, Liz. Welcome, Bailey. Welcome, beautiful, amazing people. It's so good to have you with us, and it wouldn't be quite the same if I was just here talking to myself. So thank you for being here in this precise moment. So this is what allows us to think creatively, as opposed to when we're just spinning, circling in the old thoughts, the old belief systems, the old thought patterns, the old resistances to be in a state of reactive thinking, to be in a state of resistance, to be in a state of reactive thinking. So the question becomes, do you want to be in a state of reactive thinking? Just spinning around in the old conditioned thinking or do you want to be in a space of creative thinking where the thoughts are creative they're alive they're vibrant they're new they're fresh they're from the vast space of open infinite imagination and visions and perspectives and open horizons welcome phyllis So for this creative thinking to move through, we find this space of clarity, this space of silence within, this space of spaciousness within, this space of absolute, vast, and profound stillness. Thank you, Jane. It must be all this creative thinking that's happening. So in summary, how do I have more positive thoughts? As, as almost everything in this path, it's a paradox. The, the, the common way to look at it is I have more positive thoughts by trying to get rid of the negative thoughts and trying to grab more positive thoughts affirmations, all these sorts of things. And as long as you're caught in the illusionary sense of a separate self, you're attached definitely with the ego, you're going to continue to play that game, right? 
But from this awakened consciousness, what we realize is that it's not through resisting the negative thoughts and trying to bring in the positive thoughts and identifying something as positive and something as negative, which is completely subjective. It's through finding the space of pure, open, vast presence, pure, open, vast spaciousness, pure, open, vast silence, which is the essence of who and what we are. And when we find the space of pure, open, vast silence, spaciousness, stillness, infinitude, what we could call better thoughts, which is really the creative thinking, the intelligence that's alive to the moment and receptive to the moment, is allowed to move through us. Argentina, thank you for being here, Roxana. There's something that I said, I posted last week about how the great poet is not a master of words, but a master of silence from which the words can flow through, right? So the one who has better thoughts, the one who has the ability to think creatively from a space of vast imagination is someone who has been able to rest in the silence within, the present moment awareness within, from which the vast imagination, the creative essence of who we are can express itself through thought moment by moment by moment and that space of presence the silent spaciousness is an open clear channel that allows the communion with the source also known sometimes known as god what i often call the universal creative intelligence to flow through us of a wide open, vast, open, infinite channel now for spirit to flow through us, moment by moment by moment. When we're lost in the ego, when we're lost in thought, when we're lost in the attachment, identification to story, the illusion of separation to resistance, then we're not available for this infinitely creative intelligence to move through us. Mr. Ali Kapar will, says, will you help me? I will certainly help you, sir. In any way that I possibly can and I think that when we are present here together there's something that's healing and transformational beyond the words beyond the thoughts beyond the ideas there's a presence and when we're present presence is the deepest form of healing and transformation is like a vibrational field. What we long for the most is to be fully seen. What we long for the most is to be fully heard. 
And when we feel like we're fully seen and we feel like we're fully heard, this is the essence of what we call love in its truest, deepest sense. And love comes from space of presence when we're really present with each other and we're here together. And as Jane is alluding, there's deeper ways for all of you to plug in. There's our secret uh, GLOW online community. There's personal coaching sessions with me. There's uh, my books, The Wild The Now, The Big GLOW. There's upcoming public events. And there's links for all of that below. Appreciation comes also through presence. Appreciation and gratitude comes through presence. Appreciation, self-appreciation, appreciating ourselves, gratitude for ourselves comes through presence. Self-love comes through presence and allows us to appreciate the reflection of another as well. Thank you all so much for being here. Episode 87. Next will be episode 88. One of my favorite numbers. It's like the infinite sign. 88. And these episodes, they just happen when they happen. So, gotta be ready. And willing. And able. Which are all able. Love you. Appreciate you. Thank you. See you in the next now.